sexies. You are listening to Sisters of Sexuality, Five Sage of Play. And I am Taylor Sparks, your host and sex goddess for the evening. We are here for the purposes of educating, entertaining, and informing you in all areas of sexuality, sexual health, kink, relationships, and the business of sex. I am so excited as I am every week to welcome a new guest to our show, but before I bring her on, let me give you a little bit about her. Erotic storyteller, script writer, and producer, Deborah Porter is a self-proclaimed erotic connoisseur who has held a love and fascination for all things erotic for almost two decades. She is currently the purveyor of Pleasure Points Tours, a sex positive travel service that explores the intersection between travel, art, culture, and pleasure. For over seven years, Porter wrote and produced Oh Yeah, Right There, a live erotic cabaret show in Las Vegas under the pseudonym of Shula Divine. Porter currently uh, pens erotic uh, content for several digital publications, including Oh Cleo, and Atlanta's renowned erotic photographer, rundu.com, R-U-N-D-U.com. Porter is completing Sweet Potato Pie, a collection of erotic short stories. As the creative visionary, Porter is planning the 2024 Las Vegas Erotic Arts Festival and Panama Erotic Art Pop-Up Exhibit. Porter is unapologetically passionate about promoting women's sexual expression and female-centric erotic entertainment. Born in San Francisco, California, Porter is a student of Kabbalah and makes her home in Panama City, Panama. Deborah, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you. You have no idea. No. This is my day. <laughs> oh, thank you. No, I'm excited to have you because, you know, we're going to be working together next year and we're going to tell you guys all about that in, in a few moments. But I am just interested, like, yes, I, I read what your bio said about being unapologetically passionate, but where did all this passion come from? Where did all this eroticism start? Who was he? Who started it? Who was she? Was it who was it a him or a her? Or was it the two of them that, that tied you down? Not, it, was, it was a him. Can you believe it? So yes. I really got um started with erotica. Didn't really know I had a love for it or a mm -hmm. passion for writing it until my divorce. So after my divorce, I was on a couple of dating sites and I had a guy hit me up and, and he didn't talk about, oh, you're this, you're that, let's hook up, da, da, da. He wrote me a short erotic story. Ooh. And at the end of the story, he didn't finish it. He said, your turn. And I was like, oh my God, what is happening? Yes. So I, I sat down and typed the reply or the continuation of this story that he started. And what I found was I loved it. I loved it. I had a knack for it. It just flowed. It didn't, it didn't um, seem hard to do. It just kind of flowed out of me. And uh, we went, he and I went back and forth with this one story oh, wow. uh, for a couple of weeks. And we never met, we never went out, we never dated. And I think his what? purpose uh, from the universe was to entice me, to lure me into erotica. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. Why did you never meet? I don't know. We just never hooked up. We, ne you know, we had kind of talked about it and, and then we just kind of lost touch. And Find him. If you're listening, gentlemen, who started Deborah on the love, erotic love journey, we'd like to know who you are. Please contact Deborah. <laughs> I'm going right. to leave her contact information. She needs to meet you. Right. You need to see what you have, have birthed, have. Exactly. Exactly. You, that was you were the seed and he was the soil. He was, he was, and and it literally was over twenty five years ago. Really? Yes, yes. Oh my! We need to find this man. If you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> you need to know what you did. I 
I know. I know. I have never forgotten that. And, and I have never forgotten not only how it piqued my interest in erotica, but I have never forgotten how it made me feel. Do tell. How did it make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing. I had just come out of a 21-year marriage. Mm-hmm. and um, Oh, you got married when you were, what, 12, 13? Yeah, what? something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I was married for 21 years, and um, we had a... a very vanilla sex life. Not bad, nothing great, nothing stand out. We just did our do and it was fine. But what I found with writing erotica is it awakened this passion in me. Mm-hmm. And it allowed me to express myself and to explore all these fantasies. Things that I wouldn't necessarily I say necessarily because I have done some things, but mm-hmm. things I wouldn't necessarily do just right off the top of my head. And so it made me feel empowered. It made me feel alive. It, it made me feel like, God, everybody should be experiencing this. Yes. Like women everywhere should be in their bodies, uh, feeling sexy, feeling sensual. Yes, uh, being seduced or or seducing. Mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about that. You know, when I was married, I mean, we got married young. We did, and I, yeah, you were twelve, right? He snatched yeah, you from your yeah. mother's bosom. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I was young and foolish, and thought I had an idea about how marriage should go, and I didn't know mm-hmm. it was something. My mom and I, we never talked about sex or how to please a man or what to do with your husband, or I mean. You know, it just was very vanilla. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> so, so you, so this man takes this seed within you, puts it in the soil of himself, so to speak. Right. And out sprouts sprouts this desire, this this enjoyment of writing erotica. So, where did you take it from there? After well, you had this discovery, you know, for the first year or so, I. Uh, wrote very little because I felt like I didn't know what I was doing and oh that was just a fluke and that just worked with this man online and then what are you going to do with it and I didn't tell anybody you know even though I knew how it made me feel Mm -hmm. Um, so it was years before I started even sharing the fact that I was writing erotica Uh, yeah and so that led to uh, the beginning of the book, um, you know, where I thought, well, maybe I should start collecting my stories okay. <laughs> and put them together. You know, that's an idea. Um, and then I, I worked with a, a woman in Las Vegas who had an acting troupe. She was teaching acting and drama and that kind of thing. And she and I worked together and put together our first erotic poetry night. Mm. And that led to... Um, she and I working together on scripts and we put together an entire erotic 90 minute show. Oh my. So, and what, what, so when was, how long ago was this, that first show? Um, that first show must've been, oh my God, let me think. Seven years ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so we did it once a month, uh, for in Vegas. Years. Yeah, in Vegas. Okay. And, uh, we just kind of started, we started out the erotic poetry in a little coffee shop, packed the house. The next month we moved to a larger venue because okay. people kept coming and hearing about it. And, you know, so we used her actors and actresses and then um, I wrote script. Wow. And so how long did you do that? Probably about three years. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. then you expanded a little more. And then what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get to how we got to where we are now. And right. then what'd you do? <laughs> so um, what happened with our um, erotic shows is that a lot of the actors um, left Vegas. I mean, we had a couple of people move to Atlanta. A couple of went to California, obviously Hollywood, because mm-hmm. they to really act and do those mm-hmm. kinds of things. Um, and so what I found was it was hard to replace, um, I won't say to replace them, but people that could 
bring um, some flavor and flair to mm. a script. Because, yes. you know, and this is what I say to people all the time that we're involved. It is very difficult when you say to someone, okay, so now right here at this part, you're going to moan. And then here, right here, you're going to pretend like it, it's, it is difficult to make that believable sometimes. Without if you've never on. moaned that way. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, you know, yes. interesting, um, you can, if you look at child actors and actresses, Dancers, yeah, who then go on through their teen years and then into adulthood. I can almost see when oh, they finally had sex. Just how their body changes and how they're acting. Not, you know what I mean. It's not that they're any more explicit, but if you've never moaned that way, yeah, in yeah. actual sex, sometimes yeah. it could be hard to bring that to life as an actor yeah. or an actress, right? Yeah. Or yeah. even a dance, like this is supposed to be a very sensual dance. And so I've seen dancers, they might have the mechanics of the movements, but if they've never had sex to feel what sensuality feels deep within your soul, yeah. I think yeah. it can be somewhat, not everybody, I think for some people it can be difficult to express that outwardly. Yes. If you don't, I mean, you could probably do some research and watch porn, you know, as an actor who's trying to, you know, who's still a virgin is still trying to pretend, but, sure. you know, porn is entertainment, not education. So yeah, yeah. To totally different, right? Abs oh, absolutely. And that was the other thing, trying to get people to understand the difference between erotica and porn, because mm -hmm. they are very different. And yes. so it, it was a challenge getting the same caliber of um, actors to bring that to the stage. Yes. Now I had a couple of women that were fearless. I mean, fearless. Yes. Uh, that would come to the stage and uh, we're going to do a scene about masturbation. No problem. I got it. Watch this. <laughs> well, just bringing it every single um, time we performed. Uh, and then I had some that really struggled, like, oh my God, you know, yes. you want me to do this or that. And it's funny because you, you see this in movies where you obviously, these are adult actors and actresses who are mm -hmm. um, well crafted, mm -hmm. um, obviously have had sex, but maybe there's no chemistry. And right. how often we watched a movie and you thought, oh my God, it like, they're just pretending to kiss. There's no yeah, there's no chemistry there. And None. then you see some others that the chemistry stroke so strong, like when Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. Whew. Now, yes. And they didn't even actually show a sex scene between them. I don't know if they even, I think they kissed once in the whole movie, maybe. Right. But, the, <laughs> but the chemistry between the two of them was so like hot people like yeah. oh they gotta be fucking okay. <laughs> exactly exactly they so yeah. gotta be yeah <laughs> so so on a personal note you you leave the marriage and i meant to ask is there anything that we cannot discuss it's too late now <laughs> you can just say no comment um but on a personal level when you just when you discovered you know, outside of the vanilla sex, so to speak, or, or more just sex in general, even though it might still be considered vanilla, how did you change personally, uh, uh, you know, about enjoying the erotica and discovering more about erotica and it being different than porn? What changes did you find you made within, well, within your own sexuality and, and future relationships? Yeah, it uh, was a journey of, um, a lot of self-discovery. And I really um, had a, an epiphany that I had to come to terms with um, molestation that happened mm -hmm. to me as a young girl. Okay. And I didn't realize I was carrying that because it was not in my conscious mind, certainly in my subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I had not given myself permission to enjoy sex because I felt so guilty about it. Mm -hmm. Not understanding that my body, even as young as I was, was just responding to what it was meant to do. Sure. And so that took a while. I mean, I did a couple of counseling sessions and therapy sessions, but I just really had to 
you know, get real with myself mm. to say, this is not something you need to carry. And you mm. certainly don't need to feel guilty about it. And guess what? You get to say out loud that you enjoy sex. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. I could just say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was a revelation and it totally freed me. So mm-hmm. then once I realized I had the freedom to say, yes, I enjoyed sex. Yes, I enjoyed reading and writing erotica. Yes, it was a turn on. I loved the visual. I loved all of that. And, and again, how it made me feel. Mm-hmm. Once I got that freedom, then I began to explore. Well, what else is out there? Well, who else is doing erotica? Well, look at their stuff. Well, who's yes. that stuff? Well, can I buy that painting? <laughs> 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 that kind of thing. Yes. Um, so, but it was a progressive self journey. It really was. Sure, 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 sure. And did you find that with this new, you know, this new self expression of, you know, love and loving of sex and enjoying sex and and being able to just, you know, use your words as I like to say, that the men and or women, you know, who were in your orbit that you started to attract more people like you or were you running into people who were like, must you always talk about sex? Which, you know. (laughs) Right. Here she go again. Right. (laughs) No, I actually, um, it opened up, I believe, uh, 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 the law of attraction where I was attracting men who were really sexy and who really turned me on and who were adventuresome um, and who wanted to explore and do different things and things I had never tried. I had never um, had uh, anal sex up mm-hmm. until mm-hmm. after my divorce. So yes. suddenly I was exposed to all these, not all these men. I didn't, I wasn't quite a hoe, but I was <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> there's no such thing as a hoe. You were just having a good time. I, I told, I think I told my daughter recently about, you know, some of the men on social media talk about women with high body counts. And I'm like, I, if you would never tell him your body count, how the fuck would he know? Would he he know? would never know. Stop telling people your body count. Sex. I've barely had any. No, no. <laughs> right. There's no tests. Right. Test right. And don't have sex with men in the same damn circle. You know, right. go, go to another crop. There's another crop right. circle. Don't exactly. fuck all the guys in the band. Fuck one guy in the band, one guy from the ball, football right. team, another guy from the baseball team. And then be like, no, I, I barely have sex. Stop telling people your business. That's true. That because is so they, true. you get judgment. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, until you get to an age where you don't give a shit, you know. But for your young girls, it's like, I'm not saying lie. I'm saying keep your business to yourself. (laughs) So you don't have the judgment. Yeah. You know? Plain and simple. So you will go ahead. You were hoeing and... So, but anyway, it opened me up to a lot of um, sexual experiences that I had not had, um, that men that were willing to try uh, different things, men that were willing to teach, men that were Mm. willing to um, seduce. I I just, this whole thing with seduction um, has just fascinated me, especially over the last, I'd say the last couple of years, just because I- lost art. I think um, that we're so quick now to jump into bed if there's a sexual attraction, which right. sexual attraction is, is paramount. You have to have that. But the whole idea of seduction and to seduce to me is just so lost. I, 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 it, it is. It is. And I think maybe some of that can be blamed on some porn. You know, yeah. When, yeah. once I think now that we have more women producers and directors in porn, the seduction is has been put back in because women, some women, just like some men know how enticing it can be to kind of prolong the foreplay a little yeah. bit, you know, and kind of just really yeah. in a little yeah. at a time and yeah. just, just to kind of brush by somebody, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And 
and not say a word, not rub up against them and grind, not saying there's anything wrong with that because, you know, that <laughs> has its place. And twerk. <laughs> that has its moment in its place. You know, you want to just be like, listen, let's just do this thing. Fuck the seduction. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, so that's kind of what um, opened me up, I think, after uh, the divorce and after I kind of um, was exposed to erotica and started to have this love and, and fascination for it. You know, what was it? Who was doing it? How well they were doing it? How could I participate? Um, and again, leading down that path of, of seduction. Yeah. So were you, were you participating with others? Many others? <laughs> no, well, you know, um, <laughs> just, well, first of all, no shade, no no judgment. I mean, people are open to whatever they want to do. I personally am heterosexual. Um, I love to watch women, but yeah. in terms of, of, um, of being with women, that just not, it's not my thing, you know, so to each his own. To um, each his own. I love men of color. I, I've tried the others and it just doesn't work for me. I've tried it. I've tried to get yeah. it all the time. Um, so, so you're saying black and brown guys are, black and brown men are your, are your, are your preferred yes. flavor. Yes. So yes, could sure. they be, could they be like light Latinos? Oh, you know. Oh, I, Papi, speak Spanish to me. I yes. see, Papi, I quiero todo de ti, mi amor. <laughs> don't, get, don't get me started with the Spanish. As we're okay. both residing in Spanish uh, countries right now, you in yes. Panama and me in Mexico. Yes, hmm. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to come down to Panama. You have to come. You have Cause, to come. Because the Panamanians. Mm. Girl, girl. Mm. <laughs> I'm coming. Let me look at let me look at kayak right now. Okay. <laughs> Book myself a ticket to come to Panama. So, okay, so we did the erotica. We've we've personally explored. We've done some some shows, and then you know the shows kind of you know people kind of went their way. And so then, what was the next thing that you decided to do in this arena of erotica and storytelling and script writing? Yeah, I um, then started writing for others. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that kind of, again, as you start to research and see who's out there, who's doing what, um, I began to write some things for others. And I just um, recently have kind of moved into doing mm -hmm. audio storytelling which is really kind of not my thing, not because I'm shy, but because I, in my head, when I think of someone that is reading or uh, dramatizing erotica, I just don't think I have the voice for it. Really? You have a wonderful voice. So I don't know. I just kind of dip my toe in that. And so that's kind of where I'm headed. Uh, but I've done a lot of writing for rundu.com and, um, uh, just some articles and blogs and things like that and, and some other websites. I, I'm not familiar with rundu.com. It is a, it's an online magazine. She is an erotic photographer out of Atlanta. Oh. Yes. And her, um, I should have brought a book over to kind of hold it up. Uh, uh -huh. I wrote the forward for her coffee table book. Um, her latest one, Wet Dreams, incredible. Her photo. Is it close by? You want to go get it? <laughs> let me just see if I can snag it. Hang, hang on a second. <laughs> let, me, let me see if I can. I can pause. I, I will pause. <laughs> okay, so you have the book. So I have the book, and it's called um, Dreams, and that's the cover. As long as we don't show any full frontal. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so let me see. This is gonna end up on uh, end up on YouTube. <laughs> oh, oh my word. Yes. Does she do only do men? She does women, but I have to say that um Well, we like men, so 
Yeah, but but here's the thing. I can appreciate a woman's body. For sure, for sure. But to me, her women are like, oh, okay. But her yeah. men, oh my Good. God. Let me see if I can find another that would just. Um, Good gracious. Oh. I'd, like, I'd like to thank their mother and father for producing such a oh, lovely specimen. You know. <laughs> she, she just, look at this one. Just look at that. Ooh. I know. For those of you on the audio, you're going to have to go over to the channel on YouTube to see these pictures because they are stunning. They are incredible. Um, yes. I, I won't show one of the ones that is my favorite just because we might really get um, kicked you off. The yeah, afterwards we can. To it. Very nice. Yeah. So I do a lot of work with one do. Um, she and I have become friends over the years. And it's nice. funny, we've known each other for years and never had an opportunity to work together until maybe the last seven or eight years. And then all of a sudden we just like clicked. And so we're doing yes. all that. Yes. Yes. That is exciting. Okay. So you've been writing for Run Do and Watching her do her photography. <laughs> Can I just come down? I need to watch some of this photo shoot, you know, I to get in her. the mood to write the forward. You know, I think I need I'll a little inspiration. Just... Oh my goodness. I told her I would come be a, a fluffer on, on site while she's <laughs> shooting. Yes, Are some of the men fluffed? Yeah. And oiled down. Are they also fluffed, some of the full frontal? Are they fluffed or are they relaxed? Um, some are semi-fluffed. Oh, wow. Is she yeah. a sister, sister or white girl? Yes. Yes. Sister. Let me see if there's a picture of her in here. Hang on one little second. I thought there was. Oh, yes. I may have to reach out to her. How cool is that? Oh, my goodness. I'd love to see how she got, you know, decided to do this. My, yes. my son does photography and I have been encouraging him and I think and he's done a little bit. He hasn't done a lot. I've encouraged him to do a series. Well, I have to tell you off. I'll tell you off site. <laughs> what we, okay. But it's a, a certain series that has to yeah. do with semi nudity and food and stuff. But And he had yeah. started it. He's done a little bit of it. But I'm like, you need to really go out and do more of it. But I think he was nervous about it. Um, I'm like, as long as your woman's there, it'll be fine, you know, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he's younger, you know, but I think coming with the maturity, he's much more comfortable with it, you know, and then this is the whole Me Too thing. He's like, I ain't got time for this craziness. Right. <laughs> and there that is. So well, when did you start with um, travel? How did that come about? Well, you know what? I used to work my day job was uh, I did event planning and event marketing way back in the day. I won't tell you back in the 80s, but go ahead and date myself. <laughs> we're, the, um, we're the same age. We're in the same generation. <laughs> right. We're right in the same little gap. Um, and so I've always had a love for travel. And because mm -hmm. of my job, I have been to places I probably would have never gone to, even if I had money to you know, buy my own vacation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I went to Ireland, which when I went there to work, I thought... Girl, I'm not going to Ireland. I'd probably be the only black person on the island. Like, what are we talking about? And I right. went last. Um, so places like that, that, you know, kind of broaden my horizon. So I've always loved travel. And I wanted to figure out a way to bring the two together. I wanted to bring the erotica and the sensuality and seduction uh, and match mm -hmm. that with travel so that it was um, all about pleasure. Yes. Because pleasure can be many things. Pleasure can be a sunset over the ocean. Pleasure can be food that you're eating. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be sexual pleasure all the time. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to find a way to bring that together. And so um, I met one of the reps from um, Celebrity Cruises, and she said, you should come aboard with us because apparently Celebrity also has an affiliation with Gwyneth Paltrow, who does um, Goop. Okay. And well, so I know the um, Bliss, and I, think, I think Bliss and Couples Cruises have done, have used the entire Celebrity Cruise, like they they have done a full takeover on celebrities. So, yes. so Bliss does, you know, the couples only swinger cruises or lifestyle exactly. cruises. So yeah, they're familiar. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So 
um, that's where this the crew coming up in September came from. Ah, okay, mm -hmm. okay. So this is going to be, so this, this is not a full takeover, right? We have- It's not a full takeover. And I tell people it's really what I consider lifestyle light. <laughs> it's where people okay. have a curiosity. Mm -hmm. Maybe they want to explore. Um, they want to discover new things or mm -hmm. they want to just kind of push the envelope a bit. Maybe they're not quite ready for a full lifestyle cruise. Um, and so this, I think, is the perfect vehicle for that. Mm -hmm. Because with your presence and... <laughs> And you bringing all of your goddessnessness um, <laughs> will have will have the sexual element, but yes. then there are a lot of uh, sensual and seductive elements that we're bringing. Yes, that, yes. So, uh, other than me um, yeah. and my goddessness stuff, and some toys, <laughs> and some some fun seminars, you know, and positions, and you know, right, there'll be, of right. course, the. Um, People will have an opportunity to express themselves verbally. And we'll talk about communication and the do's and don'ts and all of that. What, um, what else is there delightful going to be on this cruise? Well, um, Ollie Levy, who was a, is a, a screenwriter in Hollywood, she actually wrote episodes for Sex in the City, is ah. going to help lead our erotic writing class, because I think everyone kind of has that in them. Um, yes. And if you don't, in terms of um, writing something for public consumption, certainly you could write it for your partner or just for yourself. I for mean, sure something you want to read when you want to feel sexy. So she's going to help lead that class, that workshop. Um, and then daily, we're going to do these sensual meditations nice. with um, Sarah uh, from uh, Guided by Glow. Okay. And Guided by Glow is an online publication of sensual meditations. Ooh. And so... Um, we'll be doing those as well. Um, and then of course we've got the masquerade dinner party. Uh, we've got the, uh, um, uh, the first night, uh, cocktail party, which we've got some fun games to do on mm -hmm, board. Mm -hmm. And then, um, there's also, uh, the erotic scavenger hunt on the Island of Ibiza. Oh, <laughs> That'll be a lot of fun. Um, and then, of course, the very first day, which, we're, of course, you know, when you travel to Europe, you need to come right. in at least two days before the cruise leaves. Um, sure. So the, night, the day before, rather, we'll do um, a tour of the Barcelona Erotic Museum. So, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, and then I know that you've turned us on to uh, what is I think it's called Oops, which is the adult nightclub there in Barcelona. The, yes. Uh, Did we reach out to them? Are they expecting us? Not yet, but they. Yeah. OK. Yeah. There's but a couple of there's a couple of um, there's Oops Barcelona. And there's another club in Barcelona if um, that I could find. Maybe we'll have, you know, you can contact them. We'll have some options. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, Oops is beautiful. If you could, you know, let Oops know yeah. that, listen, we, we, we want to come. We want to throw down because <laughs> Oops is, and I've only seen it and I've had friends that have been there, but uh, everything I've heard about it is absolutely the location. Yeah. If you looked yeah. at it, that would be a great to go do a night visit. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. And so, so go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. So just between that and then we've got some great shopping once we get to Florence, um, uh, in, uh, Italy, uh, for lingerie, for silk gloves and scarves and all yes. those sensual things, um, yes. soaps and perfumes. So yeah, we've got some tours into those places as well. So it's not your typical get off the ship and kind of wander around. Yes, yeah. you can see the sites. Certainly yeah. get to Florence, um, that port is kind of in between um, the city of Florence and then Pisa, which is where people go to see the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Right. So, I didn't see Pisa and I was in Firenze, Florence, Firenze. Right. Uh, I was there last year. Oh, okay. 
in my own little personal tour of France, Spain, and Italy. (laughs) I I did over like two weeks. I was in Paris and I told you this, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, Paris. And from Paris, we caught the train to Cap d'Age and the south of France. And then we caught the train to Barcelona. And from Barcelona, we flew over to Florence to Firenze. And then from Florence, we drove to Umbria. Oh, okay. And from Umbria, we drove to Rome. So it was like three days, four days, two days, three days, two days, three days, three days. And then, yeah. and then we drove and finished in Rome. So now yeah. where do we finish? We finish in Rome, yes? We finish in Rome, yes. 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 So lots of exciting things to do. Um, again, you can, you can certainly... Um, guests can go off and see the typical touristy Mm -hmm. things. I'm certainly not trying to diminish those at all. Sure. Um, But if you want to kind of stay in that pleasure, um, sensuality vein, um, those are some of the things that we have planned. Uh, It's just going to be off the chain. I I can't wait. I just This is going to be so exciting. You have planned such an amazing trip. And I am like so (laughs) excited. And, you know, maybe by then I'll have, you know, two or three boyfriends, but you right, know, and I get to. <laughs> I'll get to this. You <laughs> listen. I am. T- I am currently taking applications. <laughs> you know, that's MI. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on like I'm on several sites. You know, at the same time. Okay. You know, trying to keep up all the conversations. You know, be like, I keep it up with six, seven, eight people. I'm like, it's just, it's just the application process. It's, it's very simple. You very know, simple. and then very- get. I have met two people that were very intriguing. One I met in person, one I met, uh, um, had a meet, you know, my meet and greet. I call it my catch and release program. Oh. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's very helpful. It helps you get through really quickly. Okay. You know, so if you, you know, you meet somebody online and if you connect, you got to listen. Okay. So you get your top, you know, five or six questions answered, whatever those are for you. Right. And if that's in alignment, then you set up a meet and greet, not a date. So the meet and greet is like, I meet you for coffee or juice. Exactly. And, right. And you designate 30 to 60 minutes. And then, yeah. then, then you get your next top 10 questions answered, whatever those are for you, you know, the ones that are important for you. And, you know, and then if, if it's a good connection, there's chemistry, that's the catch. Now you can set up a date. And if there's nothing there, you release them to the wild. And <laughs> release them with love. Goodbye. <laughs> At the very least, you've made a friend. You just release yeah. them to the wild. That's the catch and yeah. release program. So, and because I'm like, I don't need to be sitting across dinner for you for two hours to figure out you're an idiot 15 minutes in. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. by the no, time. So very true. So yeah. very true. Yeah, by the time I finished two ounces of coffee, I'm like, yeah, no, this is this is not gonna work. Yeah, it was so yeah. nice meeting you. Oh, Thank you. Right. Yeah, because I don't do small talk. Well, I mean, I can, but I just I I want to dive deeper, even in a first meeting. Oh yeah, I, I, I need to know. I don't, I don't give I, a shit. I, it was how you slept last night. What did you? Do? <laughs> well, I always ask how people slept last night, but <laughs> I don't care. I'm always like, how did you sleep? I always ask how people, how did I got that? I picked it up from somebody else who started asking. And I thought it was the most caring thing that somebody would ask me. So now I ask people all the time, hey, how'd you sleep? You know, last yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was caring. I don't know. I didn't realize I was being. But here's me. the thing I might say this what keeps you up at night? Hmm. What, what do you think about? See, what? that I don't care about. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, because then I want to know where your head's at, you know, where your focus is, where, yes. where your fears are, you know, because if, if the fear of something is keeping you up, then I, I want to know that's going to give me a more deeper understanding of who you are. That's good. You know? That's good. Because if they did, if I say, how'd you sleep and they didn't sleep well, then my next question should be, then what's keeping you up at night? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's what are you thinking about? Yeah. yeah. Make a note <laughs> to add that to my list of questions. What there keeps you, go. you up at night? My list of my questions, if there's chemistry, I'm like, so if you could have all the sex that you wanted to have, 
granted, you got to go to work, you got to eat, you got to sleep, but without any stress at all, how much sex would you have? That's a good one. Yeah. You know, that's what I want to know because if the guy uh-huh. goes, oh, I don't know, once, twice a week, release you to the wild. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for the guy that's like, oh, if I could have as much as I wanted. Right, yeah. right. Two, three times a day. Nice to okay. meet you. I'm your <laughs> sex <laughs> goddess. <laughs> We're going to get along just fine. Just fine. Because, <laughs> you know, I mean, it doesn't always happen because you got to go to work. You got you to yeah, eat. Yeah. You got to sleep. You know, you got things to do. You're not just sitting around having sex all 365 days a year, although some exactly. of us would. If we could find somebody to keep up like that, but <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. Hence the need for two or three people. So, um, yeah, so there that is. So what else? So other than the cruise, is there anything else coming up that you would love to share with us that we need to be, you know? Well, I'm working on a journal, which I hope okay. will have finished in the next couple of weeks. And yes. it's called this, um, sensual seduction and again it's focusing on how we can be more seductive Mm -hmm. and how we can use sensuality in that i mean there are some hardcore seductive things sure Um, girlfriend kim god bless you you know i love you girl but i have to use you on this one so (laughs) kim has a ritual that she uses where she has the guy sit in a chair and she sits across the room and she masturbates and he's not allowed to touch her. Mm-hmm, now, mm-hmm. in my brain, that's a hardcore seduction. I mean, that's just yes. like, you know, what 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 am I supposed to do with myself now? Right. And it's supposed to enhance and make the foreplay better and the sex yes. better and all that. But then there are the more subtle things too that sometimes we overlook. And it could be touch, um, it could be fabric, it could be uh, smells, uh, mm-hmm. you know, perfumes and incense and all of that. And so the journal is uh, for women to use and keep track of what they're um, doing, mm-hmm. um, what little tips that they're trying, how mm-hmm. it's working. And at the bottom, it says, would you do this one again or not? And so and that way, you know, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And so um, that should be ready for consumption in a couple of weeks. And it'll I'm be excited. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for you. How amazing. Yeah, I'm, so I'm so excited. And so, and, and then I'm going to extend that into a weekly um, uh, sensuality, a sensual seduction kind of um, verbalizing what's, what's in the journal. Sure, sure, sure. Now, do oh. you, either alive or or um, a real on Instagram? Yeah, or maybe people could uh, call in on a recorded line and tell their story about what they did anonymously. You yeah. know, and they could yeah. read what they did and if they do it again. And you maybe you can have a collection of these audios because you know Bijou, Bijou and Discreets um, had a orgasm library online. I'm pretty sure it's still there. Really? Yeah, it's been up for years and years and years. And you people upload this one or two minute audio clip of their orgasm. So, and then it it'll describe like, you know, man and woman or you know, two females or two men yeah. or ma- a ma- woman masturbating with a sex toy, a woman masturbating with her hands or a guy masturbating, you know, one way or the other. And, right. or, you know, then there's been like threesomes, two guys and a girl, two girls and a guy, you know. Right, right, right. But it's just, and then they have it so that, oh, I forgot when you call it like, see the lines behind me, that kind of, so they have it so that the sound has this, this line drawing that goes along with the huh? oh that's wonderful. <laughs> Do you come up with a piece of art? Well, no, you don't. It just kind of happens on the, okay. on the thing. So, but people just upload it and it's part of this orgasm library. You could probably Google orgasm library. It's yes, probably still there. Yeah. 
nothing leaves the internet. I don't know if they still accept things, but that could be something that could go along with the journal. You could invite, I don't know, I'm not, I don't know the, how you could put it together, but. But yeah, yeah, no, people could, that would be fabulous. That would be so fair. I, we actually have a survey going for men, mm. um, a, a palatial survey. So ah. we did it about 18 months ago with just a few guys. And so now we've opened it up and asking guys, you know, what, give us the real honest to goodness truth, what you like, what you don't like, uh, what you wish women would stop. Where is the survey? Um, it is, the link is in the Insta, well, no, you know, yes, it's in the Instagram bio. Can you, okay. Could you sit, could you, when we get I, off, let's talk about it. Maybe I can put it on my yes, um, site and yes. get some more data for you about yes, that. Yes. You know, it's, it's, it's anonymous. Uh, we're collecting um, uh, initials and last name. And even yeah. then, if we use your information, we'll only use initials. And right. so that way men can be really candid about what's working, what's not working, and what women think we know that we that guys wish we would stop doing. Yeah, my, my friend Parrish uh, used to do a seminar um, in the lifestyle community called How to Give a BJ with a Heart Full of Gratitude. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. And it's, and it's less about technique and more for women who have a hard time giving BJs because of either shame or yeah. past trauma. They would like to do it, but when they go to do it, it just doesn't feel yeah. good for them. It doesn't turn them on. So the course is for them. It's not for women who are like, I'm not doing that. It's not for those. It's not to convince somebody yeah. to give a BJ. It's for someone yeah. that would like to be able to enjoy it more and how to please. And yeah. also for their partners to learn how to receive it with a, with a heart for the gratitude, you know, and not grabbing somebody by the head and shoving them, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. when I, it's yeah. like, don't, don't, I used to tell when I did my other seminar about, about bull jobs, I said, you know, don't grab a woman by the head and shove your dick down her throat. I said, no. if your cat was yeah. throwing up, I said, you know, this sound, <laughs> that's a universal sound for choking. It's universal. She's choking. If your cat was throwing up on the freaking carpet, would you grab it and shove its head into the rug? Oh, freaking rug, smash our head down into your dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, really. I mean, seriously. However, one of the things when we did this um, a year and a half ago was that men wanted women to come to this act with some passion because yeah. you don't want to do it. And you're like, I'm don't just waste my, yeah. to, don't come in here half ass. I'd rather you not do it at all. It, it's a pain. It's it's just yeah. ridiculous. It's like no. It's like so. This the the um, I re and I recently counseled. Uh, not counseled. Excuse me. I don't counsel. I was recently coached a couple, and that was one of my recommendations. That you know she took her husband's dick with a with right. a, a little passion with a, heart, with a heart. No, with a heart full of gratitude. 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 Mm -hmm. You know all these things this man does for you. Why why are you not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You should, you should meet him at the front door with his favorite alcohol and some knee pads on. Uh, this is what I'm saying. You know, this is a wonderful husband she has. You know, he came to the coaching session open and willing to talk. They were really nice. They were really nice couples. So, but yeah, I'm like, girl, listen. I think he called every male friend he knew. He was like, you need to book a session because <laughs> she's going to tell your woman to suck your, you know, suck your right. dick. Exactly. Your good book. <laughs> exactly. Oh my so, God. You know, yeah. I, I'm hoping that, you know, at some point in the not too distant future, maybe we can do something together in Panama, you know, yes. or here. You know, I'm trying oh to scout out God. some places in Playa. Yeah. I know there are places in Tulum. I just need to connect with the right people that know people. So, you know, we're yeah. not. Yeah. And that's yeah. exactly what I'm trying to do here in Panama is to really find my tribe. Um, yes. Because so often uh, people of color, I should say from the States, um, we just struggle with being open with our sexuality. 
And I don't mean telling all your business and who you exactly you no, know, but just being free enough. As I said to you earlier, I realized I was free enough to speak the words that I loved having sex, that I enjoyed sex. Yeah. That's a big step for some women, you know, yeah. for guys, not as much, but for women, um, because particularly black women, we walk this tenuous tight that if I say I love it too much, then there's the connotation that I'm a hoe and I'm loose and I'm promiscuous and I'm just fucking everybody. And then there's the other side to that, that, oh no, I, I you know, I, I, oh, I don't even want to talk about it. And, you know, yeah. I'm, you're to Cl- Jesus. clutching clutching of the pearls <laughs> yes and By so the- <laughs> we often find ourselves damned if we do and damned if we don't and we don't know how to just relax and just be right. in our sexuality so right and um, there's a great book that i just came across and i've been listening to as i'm doing the research for my for my own book the um uh african american guide to ethical non-monogamy called black women black love Ooh. And um, it came out last year. Um, suddenly, I, like, I listened to, I don't know, seven interviews yesterday and suddenly her name just left my mind. I, I, need, <laughs> I need food. But um, look it up because she talks about, um, she goes back to the days of slavery mm-hmm. and what has happened to the Black family and Black marriage and how you know Christianity was put upon us and how so many of the black w- women slaves who were brought here, who were kidnapped, were already married. Yeah. Because, you know, think yeah. about back in that yeah. day, you got married very young. So you were already married, maybe had a child and you were yeah. kidnapped from your own husband. And the men have always left us. And, and even when we were allowed to marry, the vows were like from until death or distance do us part because there right. was still the chance that your partner would be taken from you. And we had to suffer not only our husbands being taken, our husbands, our fathers, our brothers, yeah, our, our sons, children. our uncles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And men have been leaving our lives for so long. So it was, It's look look it up. And if you look at the videos, you can see some great interviews, but um, yeah. it was just a deeper understanding of what I kind of knew on the surface about what we've gone through, but her uh-huh. research is just amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. you'll probably find it great. So listen, yeah. I, this has been an amazing talk. And I, I thank you so, so much, Deborah, thank for being you. here. And I'd love to tell my audience, if you want to stay up to date with Deborah and Pleasure Points Tours, you could find her on her website at pleasure-points.com. On IG, it's Cultural Pleasure Points. And on Facebook, it's cultural pleasure without the E points.com. All the links will, of course, will be in the show notes. And of course, to stay up with Sisters of Sexuality, our website is sistersofsexuality.com. If you have any questions for me or any of my guests, please feel free to email me at sistersofsexuality at gmail.com. And you can find us on all social media at Sisters of Sexuality. Be sure to visit all of our, uh, excuse me, be sure to visit my sister's site organic loving and to sign up for our newsletter at organiclover.com. And if you like this episode, leave a comment, subscribe, share, and support. And until next week, stay sexy. Bye-bye.